जय श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु नित्यानंद श्री अद्वैत गदाध शिवासादि गौर भक्त वृंद जय श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु नित्यानंद श्री अद्वैत गदाध शिवासादि गौर भक्त वृंद हे कृष्णा करुणा सिंधु दीन बंधु जगतपते गोपेश गोपिका कांत राधा कांत नमोस्तुते तप्त कंचन गौरंगी राधे वृंदानेश्वरी विश्वानु सुते देवी प्रणमा हरिये प्रिये नारायण नमस्कृत नरम चेरोम देवी सरस्वती व्यास तथो जय मुदीर गुरु श्री राधे गुरु कानंद भगवान की जय गुरु श्रीमद भागवतम की जय हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा कृष्णा हरिना जी हेलो निशा हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा एवरीवन हरे कृष्णा जय राइट सो हम लोग कल फिफ्थ अध्याय शुरू करें ऑफ आठवें स्कंद का फिफ्थ अध्याय और जैसा कि हम लोग इस पूरे स्कंद में देख रहे हैं अध्याय वन से डिफरेंट मनोवंतर्स के बारे में है सुखदेव जी गोस्वामी बता रहे हैं परीक्षित महाराज को या सो यस्टरडे वी आर रीडिंग अबाउट द सिक्स मनु राइट एंड हु इज द सिक्स मनु फर्स्ट मनु इज हु श्यामू मनु इज द फर्स्ट मनु सन ऑफ लॉर्ड ब्रह्मा सेकेंड मनु इज स्वरोचिषा स्वरोचिषा इज द सन ऑफ अग्निदेव अग्नि देव या द थर्ड मनु इज उत्तम इट्स इजी टू रिमेम्बर राइट मनु इज थर्ड मनु एंड इज सन ऑफ प्रियव्रत महाराज या एंड फोर्थ मनु इज थामस मनु इज ऑल्सो सन ऑफ प्रियव्रत महाराज एंड अगेन इज ब्रदर the fifth manu right which is revet revet manu and then chakshush manu is the sixth manu chote manu mein tamas manu mein humne gajendra moksh ke bare mein padha sixth manu chakshush manu ke bare mein jo bata rahe hain shukdev goswami ji to parikshit maharaj unko puch rahe hain ki tell me about the samundra mantar kya kya hum is sab devtaon ko amrit paan karate hain bhagwan kya कछुए का रूप धर के मंदिर पर्वत के ऊपर के मंदिर पर्वत को ऊपर रख के और पूरे समुद्र का मंथन करते हैं और उसमें अमृत पान देवताओं को कराते हैं सो दैट्स द स्टोरी विच परीक्षित महाराज जी आस्किंग सुखदेव गोस्वामी जी टू डिसाइड या एंड सो व्हाट वी आर रीडिंग इज इज पार्ट ऑफ दैट लेट्स स्टार्ट विद दिस रीना जी श्री शिव यदा युद्धे असुरैर्देवा बध्यम शिता युद्धे गता सवो निपति नो तेस्ेरूरीश यदा दुर्वास शापेन सेन्द्रा लोकस्त्रो नृप नी श्री काशाभवत्र नेशुरीजियाद क्रिया सुखदेव गोस्वामी सेड विंत असुरास विद्य सर्पेंट वेपन Severely attacked the Demai gods in a fight. Many of the Demai gods fell and lost their lives. Indeed, they could not be received, revived. Sorry, indeed they could not be revived. At that time, O okay, King, the Demai gods had been cursed by Durvasa Muni. The three worlds were poverty-stricken, and therefore ritualistic 
ceremonies could not be performed. The effects of this were very serious. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Huh? So Sukhdev Goswami ji kya bata rahe hai? So, there was a time when Asuras were winning. Yeah. And they also fought with Devatas. And some of the Devatas, they could not be revived. Yeah? They could not be revived at that point in time. Right? Why? Because the Devatas had been cursed by Durvasa Muni. Yeah? And we'll read about why and how Durvasa Muni, Durvasa Muni cursed the Devatas. Yeah? And so it was a serious affair. He says, Yada Durvasa Sape Shapena. Yeah? Durvasa Muni is sharp. And Yudde, Asure and Deva. So between Devatas and Asuras. And nice purple. Let's read this. Uh, Nisha. It is described that while Durvas, Durvasa Muni was passing on the road, he saw Indra on the back of his elephant and was pleased to offer Indra a garland from his own neck. Own neck. Indra, however, being too puffed up, took the garland and without respect for Durvasa Muni, he placed it on the trunk of his carrier elephant. The elephant being an animal could not understand the value of the gar garland and thus the elephant threw the garland between its legs and smashed it. Seeing this insulting behavior, Durvasa Muni immediately cursed Indra to be poverty stricken, uh, bereft of all material opulences. Thus the demigods affiliated on one side by fighting demons and on the other side by the curse of Durvasa Muni, lost all the material opulences in the three worlds. Three worlds. To be extremely opulent in materialistic advancement is sometimes very risky. The, the material opulent persons does not care about anyone and thus he commits offenses to great personalities such as devotees and the great and great saints. This is the way of material opulence. As described by Sukadev Goswami, Dhana Durmandha Duram Madanda, too much wealth makes one blind. This happens even to Indra in his heavenly kingdom, and what to speak of others in the material world. When one is materially opulent, he should learn to be sober and well behaved toward Vaish Vaishnavas and saintly persons, otherwise he will fall down. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Yeah. So what is being mentioned is Durvasa Muni when he was passing on the road. <clears throat> he put his garment to Indra Dev, yeah, in the happiness, but Indra Dev did not care. He put it on the elephant, the garland fell down. Durvasa Muni, Durvasa Muni felt, of course, not that great. And then he said to Indra to be poverty stricken. And that's what happened. So Devatas fell down because of that. And with the Asuras, they were getting bitter. So that's what is going on. Yeah. Ajay. Nishamyai Tat Tat Surgana Mahendra Varuna Deha Nadhya Gakshat Gaksha Swayamam Mantrai Mantra Yanto Vinishritam. Tato Brahma Sabham Jammu Meru Jammu Meru Murd Murdhani Sarvashah Sarv Vigyapayam Chaku Pranata Parimechini Lord Indra Varun and other demigods seeing their lives in such a state consulted among themselves but they could not find any solution. Then all the demigods assembled and went together to the peak of Sumeru mountain. There in the assembly of Lord Brahma, they fell down to offer Lord Brahma their obeisances and then they informed him of all the incidents that had taken place. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Yeah. So then all the devatas gathered and they go to Lord Brahmaji. Yeah. It says here, Tato Brahma Sabham. Yeah. In Sumeru mountain. Uh, yeah. And they tell everything to Lord Brahma. Sevilokene Drevaya Vadin 
पत्नी सत्वा अन्विगत प्रभान लोकान मंगल प्रायान सुरान यथा विभु समाही तेन मनसा संस्मरण पुरुषम परम उवाचोत फुल्ल मदनो देवांस भगवान पर अपॉन सीन दैट द डेमिगोड्स वर बीरेफ्ट ऑफ ऑल इन्फ्लुएंस एंड स्ट्रेंथ and that the three worlds were consequently devoid of auspiciousness and upon seeing that the demigods were in an awkward position whereas all the demons were flourishing lord brahma who is above all the demigods and who is the most powerful concentrated his mind on the supreme personality of godhead thus being encouraged he became bright faced and spoke to the demigods as follows yeah <clears throat> so basically yeah he says your samahitena mansa like totally focused on the supreme personality of godhead on whom sansmaran purusham param param purush right that's the lord shri krishna uh, and so lord brahma ji focuses on that and then he speaks to demigods as follows which we'll see in the upcoming shlokas again a nice purport see this uh, rina ji <clears throat> after hearing from the divine gods the real situation lord brahma was very much concerned because the demons were unnecessarily so powerful when demons become powerful the entire world is placed in an awkward position because demons are simply interested in their own sense gratification and not in the welfare of the world the my gods are devotees however are concerned with the welfare of all living beings sri rupa goswami for example left his ministership and went to vrindavan for the benefit of the entire world lok naam hita karinao this is the nature of saintly person or demi god even impersonalists think of the welfare of all people thus brahma was very much concerned at seeing the demons in power hari krishna hari krishna अहम भवो यूयमथो असुरोदय मनुष्य तेव्यदर्म जात यशकला विसर्जिता व्रजाम सर्वे शरण तम व्यय लॉर्ड ब्रह्मा से आय लॉर्ड शिवा ऑल ऑफ यू डेमी गॉड्स दिमंस एंड द लिविंग एंटिटीज बॉन्ड ऑफ पर्सपरेशन द लिविंग beings born of eggs the trees and the pla plants sprouting from the earth and the living entities born from embryos all come from the supreme lord from his incarnation of rajogun lord brahma is the guna avatar and from the great sages rishis who are part of me let us therefore go to supreme lord and take shelter of his lotus feet hari krishna Hare Krishna. So Lord Brahma is telling all the details. Is Rajam Sarve Sharna Tam Avyaya? Yeah. Let's go to the Supreme Personality of Godhead and take shelter of His lotus feet. Yeah. Ajit. Nayasya vadhyo na char rakshaniyo nope chaniye yadav. मानसिकाले फॉर द सुप्रीम पर्सनैलिटी ऑफ गॉड हेड देर इज नो वन टू बी किड नो वन टू बी प्रोटेक्टेड नो वन टू बी नेग्लेक्टेड एंड नो वन टू बी वर्शिप्ड नॉन द लेस द for the sake of creation maintenance and annihilation according to time he accepts different form as incarnations either in the mode of goodness the mode of passion or mode of ignorance hari krishna hari krishna yeah, like it mentioned like everything is some samtal for the supreme personality of godhead yeah it says yanna yash vadhyo na rakshaniyo That's what he's saying. No one to be killed, no one to be protected, no affection here, and no other. Yeah, says no one to be neglected, no one to be worshipped. Nonetheless, 
and the load comes for the sake of creation, maintenance, and annihilation according to time and takes different incarnations. And those are based on the mode of three modes of materialistic nature. We know that, right? Even though the load is beyond those modes of nature, right? Which are mode of goodness, mode of patience, and mode of ignorance. Okay, nice paper. Let's keep this. This was explained that the supreme personality of God has is Godhead is equal to everyone. This is confirmed by the Lord Himself in Bhagavad Gita 9.29. Samoham Sarva Bhuteshu Nami Devesyo Tina Priya Ye Bhajanti Tumam Bhaktiya Mai Te Tesu Chapiaham. I envy no one, nor am I partial to anyone. I am equal to all. But whoever renders service unto me in devotion is a friend, is in me, and I am also a friend to him. Although the Lord is impartial, he gives special attention to his devotees. Therefore, the Lord says in Bhagavad Gita 4.8, Paritranaya sadhu naam vinashaya chadaskritam dharma samsapana te arthaya sambhavami yuge yuge. To deliver the pious and to annihilate the miscreants, as well as to re-establish the principles of religion, I myself appear millennium after millennium. The Lord has nothing to do with anyone's protection or destruction, but for the creation, maintenance, and annihilation of this material world, he apparently has to act either in goodness, in passion, or in darkness. Actually, however, he is unaffected by these modes of material nature. He is the supreme Lord to everyone. He is the Supreme Lord of everyone. As a king sometimes punishes or rewards someone to maintain law and order, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, although having nothing to do with the activities of this material world, sometimes appears as various incarnations according to the time, place, and object. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Yeah? <clears throat> the important thing which is mentioned here, yeah, which is from Bhagavad Gita, Shlok 4.8 is, I envy no one, nor am I partial to any. Samoham Sarva Bhuteshu, like Saman, for Sarva Bhuteshu, Sabi Pranyo ke liye, Name Dvesho Sti Na Priya. Yeah, equal to all. Uh, neither he is jealous, nor he is enemy, nor he is Priya for anyone. So he is totally impartial. But what he is saying is, Ye bhajanti tu mam bhaktya. People who are rendering the devotional service. Yeah. But whoever renders service unto me in devotion is a friend, is in me, and I am also a friend to him. Mai te teshu chapi aham. Yeah. So people who are devotional, yeah, doing devotion service, they are very special for the Lord, even though he is supposed to be impartial to everyone. Yeah, is what is mentioned. Ayam chetashya stiti palanakshana satvam jushana shabhavaya dehinam asmat vrajama sharanam jagat guru swanam senodhashyati sham surtiya. Now is the time to invoke the mode of goodness of the living entities who have accepted material bodies. <coughs> The mode of goodness is meant to establish the Supreme Lord's rule, which will maintain the existence of the creation. Therefore, this is the opportune moment to take shelter of the Supreme Personality of Godhead because he is naturally very kind and dear to the demigod. He will certainly bestow good fortune upon us. Yeah. And who is speaking this? Who is currently speaking? Brahmaji. Brahmaji, yeah. Remember all devatas go to Brahmaji. And then Brahmaji is telling the devata is that let's go to meet Supreme Personality of Godhead. And he's saying why? Yeah, he says Tasmad Vrajama Sharanam Jagat Guru. Yeah, he's the Jagat Guru of every one. And he is Sur Priya, right? Devatas are Priya. So he's going to definitely listen to us. And Nisha? 
the material world is conducted by the three modes of nature, namely sat Sattvagun, Rajogun and Tamogun. By Rajogun, everything, everything material is created by Sattvagun, everything material Everything material is created. By Sattvagun, everything material is maintained properly. And by Tamogun, when the creation is improperly situated, everything is destroyed. From, the, from this verse, we can understand the situation of Kaliyu, though which one which we are not now passing, just before the beginning of Kaliyu, or in other words, at the end of the Dwapar Yu. Lord Sri Krishna appeared and left his instructions in the form of Bhagavad Gita, in which he asked all living entities to surrender unto him. Since the beginning of Kali Yuga, however, people have practically been unable to surrender to the lotus feet of Krishna, and therefore after some 5,000 years, Krishna came again as Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu just to teach the entire world how to surrender unto him, unto Sri Krishna, and thus be purified. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Yeah. So what is being mentioned is how the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Lord Sri Krishna, appears yeah, at different times. Um, okay. Surrendering unto the lotus field of Krishna means achieving complete purification. Krishna says in Bhagavad Gita 18.66, Sarva Dharman Paritrajaya Mam Ekam Sharnam Vraj Aham Tvam Sarva Pape Bhyo Mokshasi Yami Ma Sucha Abandon all varieties of religion and just surrender unto me. I shall deliver you from all sinful reaction. Do not fear. Thus, as soon as one surrenders unto the lotus feet of Krishna, one certainly becomes free from all contamination. Kaliyug is full of contamination. This is described in Srimad Bhagavatam 112.3.51. Kalir dosa nidhe ranjana. Ranjana Asti Hyu Asti Hayeko Mahan Guna Kirta Nad Iva Krishnasya Muktas Sangha Param Vajit. This age of Kali the age of Kali is full of unlimited falls. Indeed, it is just like an ocean of falls, Doshandhi. But there is one chance, one opportunity. Kirtanad Eva Krishna's Mukta Sangha Param Vajet. Simply by chanting the Hare Krishna mantra, one can be freed from the contamination of Kali Yuga and his in his original spiritual body can return home back to Godhead. This is the opportunity of Kali Yuga. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Yeah, of course, a couple of different things mentioned here. One is we all have heard this, right? From Gita, Sarva Dharman Paritajya Mam Ekam Sharnam Vijay. Yeah? Like you just surrender unto me. And if you do that, what will happen? Aham Tvam Sarva Papipu. Like all the sinful reactions, he will deliver uh, yeah, one from. And of course, Mokshiyami Mesuja. So this is what Lord Sri Krishna is telling to Arjuna. And then, of course, it's mentioned Kali Yuga is full of contamination. But what is being mentioned is Kirtanada Eva Krishna Shep. The one biggest opportunity we have in Kali Yuga, yeah, as a human being is that we can simply by chanting the Hare Krishna mantra. And what is the Hare Krishna mantra? Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, 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 Krishna,
that's the opportunity of Kali Yuga. Yeah. You cannot do this in like previous Yugas, like Dwapar Yuga, Treta Yuga and Satyug, people had to go through a lot of austerities. They had to do Havan and do it the right way and all those things. In Kali Yuga, all these things are not possible. So what is being mentioned is simply by chanting the Hare Krishna moment, one can get moved. Yeah. Okay. When Krishna appeared, he gave his orders, and when Krishna himself appeared as a devotee, as Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he showed us the path by which to cross the oceans of Kali Yuga. This is that is the path of Hare Krishna movement. When Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu appeared, he ushered in the era of Sankirtan movement. It is also said that for 10,000 years, this era will continue. This means that simply by accepting the Sankintan movement and chanting the Hare Krishna Mahamant, the fallen souls of Kali will be delivered. After the battle of Kurukshetra, at which Bhagavad Gita was spoken, Kali continues to continues for 432,000 years, of which only 5,000 years have passed. Thus, there is still a balance of 427,000 years to come. Of these 427,000 years, the 10,000 years of Sankirtan movement inaugurated by Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu 500 years ago provide the opportunity for the fallen souls of Kali Yuga to take to Krishna consciousness movement, chant the Hare Krishna Mahamad, and thus be delivered from the clutches of material existence and return home back to Godhead. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Yeah. So we read that how the fallen souls of this Kali will be delivered by chanting Hare Krishna Mahamad. And it's also mentioned that Kali is how long is the Kali 432,000 years. 432,000 years. Right? Remember? How long is the Dwapar Yuga? 1.2 and Satyug is like 1.67 million years. If you total up everything, it comes to 4.32 million years. That's the one yug cycle. Remember, we are talking about the yug cycle. That's 4.32 million years is one yug cycle. And in one day of Lord Brahma, how many yug cycles are there? So one day is 4 billion 32 million years. One yug cycle is 4.2 million years, so almost you know, 1,000 yug cycles in one day of Lord Brahma. How many Manus are there in one day of Lord Brahma? 14, 14 Manus, yeah. Each Manu is 71 yug cycles and some space. So like this 14 Manus and, and that's how much in one day of Lord Brahma. But coming back, Kali Yuga is 432,000 years. And how many years have passed so far? 10,000. Yeah, 5,000 years. Have passed. Okay. Yeah, 5,000. So we haven't seen anything yet, basically. <laughs> Kali Yuga had just started. This is nothing. <laughs> the most important part, though, is the Hare Krishna mantra will take us yeah, back to Godhead. And it's mentioned that this is going to be effective for almost 10,000 years of the Sankirtan movement. So the, the Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's movement, which started 500 years, what is being mentioned is in the future, it will be there till 10,000 years and then something else. Yeah. So, and so this provides the opportunity for the fallen souls of Kali Yuga to take to the Krishna consciousness movement <laughs> and the Hare Krishna Mahaprabhu and thus be delivered from the clutches of material existence and return home, the true home, which is back to Godhead is what is mentioned. That's why when we start this Srimad Bhagavatam, we start with the chanting of one round chanting of the Hare Krishna Mahamaj. Yeah. 
And it's good that you chant it along with Srila Prabhupada's voice. It's really nice. Yeah. Hare Krishna Vasikha Mahuji. Hare Krishna Mahuji. Hare Krishna. Pano Gya. Chanting of the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra is potent always. But it is especially potent in the age of Kali. Therefore, Sukhdeva Goswami, while instructing Maharaj Parikshit, the the chant, stressed the, this chanting of Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. Kaler dos nidhir rajan, asti heya ek mahan gunaha, kirtanad eva krishna sya mukta sangha param brajet. My dear Krishna, although Kali Yuga is full of faults, there is still one good quality about this age. It is that simple, simply by chanting the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra, one can become free from material bondage and be promoted to the transcendental knowledge. Bhagavatam 12.3.51 Those who have accepted the task of spreading this Krishna Maha Mantra is full Krishna consciousness should take this opportunity to deliver people very easily from the clutches of material existence. Our duty, therefore, is to follow the instruction of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and preach the Krishna consciousness movement all over the world very sincerely. This is the best welfare activity for the peace and propensity prosperity of the human society. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Yeah? So this is mentioned in Srimad Bhagavatam, right? And Sukhdev Goswami is telling Maharaj Parikshit is, is one good quality. Everything else is probably negative in Kalyu, but one good quality of Kalyu is by chanting, simply by chanting the Hare Krishna Mahamantra, one can become free from material bondage and be promoted to the transcendental kingdom. Kirtanad ev Krishna Shya Mukta Sang Param Prajit. Param This Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's movement consists of studying Krishna Sankirtan, Param Vijayate Sri Krishna Sankirtanam. All glories to the Sri Krishna Sankirtana. Why is it so glorious? This has also been explained of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Keto Darpan Marjanam. By the chanting of the Hare Krishna Mahamantra, one part is finished. The whole difficulty is that in this age of Kali, there is no Sattva Guna and no clearance of the heart. And therefore, people are making the mistake of identifying with their bodies. Even the big philosophers and scientists with whom we deal are practically all under the impression that they are their bodies. The other day we were discussing a prominent philosopher, Thomas Huxley, who was proud of being an Englishman. This means that he was in the bodily conception of life. Everywhere we find this same misunderstanding. As soon as one is in the bodily conception of life, one is nothing but an animal like a cat or a dog. Sa eva go thara. Thus, the most dangerous of these dirty things within our hearts is this misidentification of the body as the self. Under the influence of this misunderstanding, one thinks, I am this body, I am an Englishman, I am an Indian, I am an American, I am Hindu, I am Muslim. This must, misconception is the strongest impediment and it must be removed. That, that is the instruction of Bhagavad Gita and of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Yeah? So if we are not this body, then who are we? Yeah, it says here, like, there is not a bodily conception of life. We should not identify ourselves as body. Right? So then we should identify as what? Who are we? Normal human, Krishna hmm? servant. Yeah, Krishna servant. But yeah, so we are the eternal soul, right? So it's like it's mentioned, like as every day we wear different clothes, right? It's mentioned that after this whole cycle of birth and death, right? People wear different bodies, <laughs> depending on the karmas. All this 8.4 million species. So the soul is still there, 
but because it's conditioned, we cannot see our original position, which is the servant of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. We are servant means we are part and parcel of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Right? We are his ansh. So we also have the same qualities. But now we are impacted by the uh, materialistic world. All these three gunas, Satogun, Rajagun, and Tamagun. So we are not able to identify ourselves. And because of that, we identify ourselves as bodies, which is a misunderstanding, is what is mentioned here. Yeah. Nisha? Bhagavad Gita begins with this instruction. Dehi no smin yatha dehi kaumaram yayu manam jara tatha dehantara prapti dhiras tatra na nirvati. As the embodied soul continually passes in this body from boyhood to youth to old age, the soul similarly passes into another body at death. The self-realized soul is not bewildered by such a change. Bhagavad Gita 2.13 Although the soul is within the body, nevertheless because of misunderstanding and the animal uh, propensities, one accepts the body as the self. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu therefore says, Cheto Darpana Marajanam To cleanse the core of the heart which is full of misunderstanding is possible only through uh, Sri Krishna Sankirtan. The leader of the Krishna consciousness movement should very seriously take this opportunity to be kind to the fallen souls by delivering them from the misunderstanding of materialistic life. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. And we have come across this shloka, right, in the in, in Bhagavad Gita, right, in 2.30. Yeah? Bhagavan says, Kumaram Yovanam Jara. Jara is the old age. Right? So from Bajpan, youth and old age. What happens? Dehino ismin yatha dehe. The embodied soul passes in this body from boyhood to youth to old age. And similarly, the soul similarly passes into another body at death. Tat dehantar praptir. Yeah. Dhiras tatra na nihayati. So this is how the soul continuously pass. But what is mentioned, right, as a human being, we have the opportunity where we can get out of this cycle. What cycle? The cycle of birth and death and old age and disease. Because in this universe, there, it's mentioned there are two types of births, right? One is all these 8.4 million species other than human being. Yeah, that is called bhogyoni. Bhogyoni means you have done the karmas and you are here only to take the bhog, the result of the karmas. There is no further karmas you are doing. You are just constantly going through different bodies. But as a human being, it's called karmyoni. Karmyoni means as a human being, you are still getting the results of your all your previous lives. But then you also have the karmyo, where you can do the karmas by which you can get better life or even you can go back to Godhead. So that's what is being mentioned that <clears throat> we need to do Sri Krishna, Sankirtan, devotional service, and that's an opportunity for the human life. And I just read one more here. Uh, Ajay? Ajay? Yeah. Is it uh, one cannot be happy in any way with the material world as stated in Bhagavad Gita 8.16. Abraham Bhavanavat Loka Punar Avratino Arjuna From the highest planet in this material world down to the lowest all the places of misery wherein repeated birth and death takes place. Therefore, not to speak of going to the moon, even if one is promoted to the highest planetary system, Brahma Lok, there cannot be any happiness in the material world. If one actually wants happiness, one must go to the spiritual world. The material world is characterized by a struggle for existence and the survival of the fittest. 
is a well-known principle, but the poor source of this material world do not know what is survival and what who to fit. Who is fit? Survival does not mean that one should die. Survival means that one should not die, but should enjoy an everlastingly blissful life of knowledge. This is survival. The Krishna consciousness movement is meant to make every person fit for survival indeed. It is meant to stop the struggle for existence. The Srimad Bhagavatam and Bhagavad Gita gives definite directions on how to stop the struggle for existence and how to survive in the eternal life. The Sankirtan movement, therefore, is a great opportunity. Simply by hearing Bhagavad Gita and chanting the Hare Krishna Mahamant, one becomes completely purified. Thus, the struggle for existence ceases and one goes back home, back to Godhead. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Yeah, so what is mentioned in this paragraph is everyone is trying to be happy, but the happiness is not going to be achieved as we know in this material world. But the way to achieve the happiness is chanting the Hare Krishna Mahamantra because by chanting this, one becomes completely purified. Slowly and slowly and slowly. Right? Like we've been reading Srimad Bhagavatam from the last three years. <laughs> slowly and slowly we are making progress. Right? Like this chanting slowly and slowly and slowly, one becomes completely purified. Yeah, sometimes it takes births, after births. But if one continues this, right, one becomes completely purified. And then what happens? The struggle for existence ceases. So it's not just about this life, right? It's about the continuous cycle of the materialistic life. The struggle for existence ceases and one goes back home, back to court. Is what is mentioned here. So we are going to pause here at this point. Follow Srimad Bhagavatam ki. Jai. Yeah. Since it's already 10 30. So we'll pause and let's hear for five minutes. See how people are engaged in the Krishna conscious movement throughout the world. Yeah. It's coincidentally, you know, I had picked up this <laughs> the Rath Yatra in Mexico. This happened before three, four years. That's in Mexico. So we are just going to see it five to seven minutes. Um.
Okay, how is the Rathriyatra in Mexico? <laughs> Two years. So it's very interesting. So how the Hare Krishna Mahamantra chanting is helping everyone. Mm -hmm. There was a Rathriyatra in New York, I think in, in June, I mean this month. First or second week of June. 8th eight, eight June actually. So that, that's in New York, there's a huge Rathriyatra actually. We'll see it some point. It's a huge Jyotiyatra which happens in the New York, you know, midtown. Okay. Anyways, so I think we are again approaching the long weekend. <laughs> Next week is long weekend in USA, July 4th, right? And then I'm also traveling at that time. So I was wondering, I think we'll again pause for two weeks. Is that okay? Yeah. Yeah. So next week and then the next week. And then we'll restart on, uh, let me see. So we'll take the week of July 4th and then the next week. So we'll restart on July 15th. Okay. Yeah. So we'll pause for two weeks and then resume on July 15th again. And we'll continue reading this beautiful story of how the man, the how that under Parvat, Lord Vishnu does the the, how the Samundra Mantan happens and how the Amrit is given to all the Devatas, so they become Amar. Yeah. Till then, enjoy a long weekend and, you know, have a great time. Sure. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.